Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I have a beautiful card and a sweet little box to share with you today. I used the Fine Art Floral suite of products to create these projects. This is a really beautiful suite featured in our Occasions catalog that includes a stamp set, coordinating dies, as well as DSP, um, this beautiful DSP, and I'm not even using the prettiest pieces of it, this gorgeous gold acetate ribbon and embossing folder, a whole um, suite of products, including some gold leaf, which I used uh, in my live recently. So let me show you how I put these projects together. First, we'll start with the card. This is a really beautiful card. It's actually quite simple to make. So I am going to start with a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock that I'm going to fold in half. Give that a good crease. I've got a piece of um, that DSP. Look at how beautiful this is. This was all hand painted and created um, at Stampin' Up! So all these brush strokes are actual um, paintings that were made and then turned into the designer series paper. And this paper is just stunning. Uh, it's actually one of my favorites. I, um, I, I admit I'm having a hard time cutting into it, but it's just so pretty. Um, look at how beautiful these blooms are. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is probably my favorite. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to my card base. And I really struggle de deciding which pieces to use because they're just so pretty. Um, but I love all the texture uh, found in this. Uh, I also cut that piece of acetate. Now on our acetate, there's like actually a little film on the back. And so you just want to kind of at the corner, I'm going to rub my nail. And if you can't get it to start uh, pulling that backing off, um, just use like a take your pick tool and that'll help get it off. Okay, so we want to pull that backing off and look at the difference. You can see that's just got a little bit of cloudiness, but you don't notice it till you pull it off. And then it's like crystal clear. So pretty. So you can use either the silver or gold side. It's up to you. I chose the gold side because I just thought it was really beautiful. Um, and also this lines up. I just have to point this out, although this has nothing to do with my project. This lines up with the paper here. Let's see, maybe if I turn it this way, look at that. It lines up with the design. So it's really cool. So you can just fit it. Do you see it? Maybe you can't see that because of the, but it lines up with the design, which is pretty cool. So anyway, um, that's just one of the patterns. All right, now I wanna put this on my card, but of course uh, any adhesive is gonna show through. So I'm going, I die cut this label. This is from the textile labels uh, dies from the annual catalog. I'm gonna pl place that on here so I can then put my adhesive behind this. So I'm gonna pop this layer up onto my card. And then uh, I will use that to help me hide the adhesive on the back side of my card. So I'll just position that on there like so. And then I can just take my snail and run it on here like that. And no one will know. It's so wonderful. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna set this aside for a little bit so I can do my stamping. Okay, I'm going to take and stamp this beautiful image onto my card. Now, I'm going to clean it really quickly. I just um, want to show you a really easy way to do this. So I'm actually going to ink this up with my Pool Party ink pad. Okay, and that will give me a base of color. And then um, you're going to laugh at me a little, but that's okay. I'm going to literally wipe off the part I want green. I'm just going to wipe off that ink. Now, I wouldn't do this if it was really dark ink, but it's pretty light, so I can I can manage. Um, and then I'm going to color in with my old olive marker. And that way I can have the greenery a different color. And what I, and I'm actually going to show you the, uh, results. I actually was doing this with the pool party marker and I was finding I was getting a lot of streaks on the stamped image itself. 
And that was getting frustrating for me. So I decided to, rather than use the pool party marker, use my pool party pad. And the pad will ink up your stamp so much better. Um, I don't actually care for the I don't like this technique that much. Um, I don't do it that often, but it does. It's actually pretty effective um, for what I'm doing today because I can get the two different colors on here. Okay, so then I'm just going to do these little in-betweens. And yes, there's still pool party ink, but it's a little tiny section, so I'm not too worried about it. And it's a really light color. Okay, I'm going to huff on this. And I will stamp this on my scrap of white here. Okay, and oh, voila, it's gorgeous. Okay, next what I want to do, ooh, I missed this a little bit. Let's see if we can line that back up. I do sort of have a gift for this. There, did you see what I did there? So good. Okay, so now I'm going to take some uh, Bermuda Bay ink and this little coordinating stamp, and we're going to just stamp that right on top to add some beautiful dimension to these flowers. They were kind of flat before and now they really are just gorgeous. All right, next we'll take and run this through my die cut machine along with one of the little um, postage labels right here. And I just want that as well. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm kidding actually. I'm gonna do my other stamping at once and then I can die cut it all at once. So the other thing I want to do is ink up this big solid image and this is pool party ink and then just like before we're going to do the detail on top in Bermuda Bay and sometimes I find it's a little easier to stamp the detail first so let's see how I do lining this up and if I struggle then we can stamp this part first and then the pool party over the top of it. Ooh, I did a pretty good job there, so I'm going to leave it. But like I said, if you stamp this one first and then the pool party over the top, that might help if you struggle with it, uh, get lining it up at all. And then finally, I'm going to ink up the little branch image here in some old olive ink. Okay, so now I will take and die cut these three pieces. These two will go on our box. Okay, to arrange the rest of our card. I'm going to take this piece and doesn't that just die cut so beautifully and I want to pop that up onto my card with some dimensionals and then I'm going to get a couple of the edge pieces here. fit under here so the whole thing sits up nicely okay and then I will take and position that right on there oh so pretty uh, I also die cut that little postage stamp and this uh, stamp set comes with several sentiments and I thought this was a really fancy card so I'm going to go with congratulations and we'll just stamp that right in the center here Looks so great. Um, a little tip for you, I took and die cut several of these um, to keep in my stamp set. I, I just put them in a clear envelope in the case um, so that I can use them another time, you know, when I need one quick and handy. I just like doing that. Now I'm gonna put a die cut or a pop-up right here and then uh, a little bit of seal right over here so that I can position this on my card about there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take some of the ribbon. This is really pretty ribbon. It's kind of like a neutral color with gold kind of uh, woven in. So this is the fine art floral ribbon. I'm just going to tie a little bow with this and then we'll adhere it to our card. So pretty. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm going to add that bow onto my card and we will be done. It's just such a pretty card. Now I made a coordinating box to go with this 
and um, I'll show you how I put it together. It's pretty simple. Um, I just cut a piece of DSP. Uh, I measured this and it's just about four inches wide, the box. This is um, one of our, I think it's called Love You Always Treat Boxes. And so I just wrapped, I, I assembled the box, which is really easy to do. And uh, I wrapped this with the DSP. So I did three and seven eighths inches wide by about uh, 10 inches. And then I cut a three and a half inch wide piece of the acetate and wrapped both of these around. Um, now to do the acetate, I actually scored on the lines um, so that I would get a good crease because otherwise it just kind of is bubbles out. Then of course I have my two die cut pieces. Um, I'm actually going to snip these off of the stem because we don't need the stem. <laughs> and then you can even curl these a little bit. And I took the two pieces and just adhered them underneath like so, and then popped them up onto my box. And that's how this was assembled. So really easy. You can fit all kinds of fun things in here. Three Lindor truffles fit nicely, I'm just saying. Um, but it's a, a great little uh, gift. Uh, this would be lovely for a gift card or for cash to give to somebody. Maybe you know, put candy or, or um, you know, that shredded paper fill stuff for gift bags. So a really beautiful um, set for a gift, uh, maybe for a, a wedding shower or something like that. So anyway, I hope you loved these cards. Now I've got two things for you, if or these projects, I've got two things for you. If you would like to purchase any of the products so that you can make these at home, please shop my online store. All the links of the things that I used are listed below, as well as if you would like more inspiration with this suite, I have an instant download PDF that is available for $15. It has 12 project tutorials, each with a video, and it is from my all-star tutorial bundle. This was actually um, the January bundle. So if you didn't get it in January, you can pur still purchase it. And I will link both of those things in the description of my video. Thank you guys so much for stamping with me. If you could give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, that would rock my world. I hope you guys have a great um, day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.